These are the men and women of Beaver Valley, the bravest of the brave. They fought fearlessly for their country, their city, their community, and for the ideals we share as Americans. They served proudly in World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the Gulf War, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Here now are their stories, their own experiences in their own words, the words of the heroes of Beaver Valley. 100-year-old Ernie Trailer was born in Virginia and moved with his family to Rochester when he was just four years old. At the start of World War II, he enlisted in the U.S. Navy. He completed torpedo school in Newport, Rhode Island in 1943. I joined my ship in uh, Boston. It wasn't quite completed yet. We had to be housed there for about a month before they completed it. And then, of course, we took a track crew, a break-in crew, that went up north, clear up to above Maine, see if it would run. And if they were all okay, then they come back down there and out through the Panama Canal and all. Boy, I got around a good part of the world. My rating was a torpedo man, but we never used a torpedo. Trailer served on the USS Connor, a Fletcher-class destroyer located in the South Pacific. The USS Connor guarded carriers as they went about their activities. As part of the ordnance crew, Trailer was responsible for more than just torpedoes. My uh, job at the time was back on the fantail of the ship. Of course, they called us torpedo men, but we had depth charges back there on the fantail. That's only about three feet of all the water at the back end of the ship. And our charges were like a barrel that size back there, almost as big as a barrel, and we'd ro that'd roll off. But they had smaller things on each side of the ship, and they'd shoot them out. Seasickness never bothered Trailer, and he didn't sleep in the bunks with the other men. He preferred to sleep on deck. We had two sets of torpedo tubes, about, I think, a room for five wide up on the deck, and there was room on them, of course. But then we had bunks downstairs. Of course, it didn't show a pencil, or a bit of light. You know, they would show a light, and they were closed off. And I didn't smoke, and I never played cards much at all. You'd have about 10 guys in there, and then you smoking and playing hell and gambling with each other. So I slept right up on deck. The only trouble with it was, you'd be sleeping out there. And believe me, you think it's hot out there, but at night it can get cold. There were also moments when the USS Connor had to endure challenging weather. We had one time for three days, we couldn't anything, couldn't cook meals at all. You get rough weather, you get scared. But when you go along and you see a Big shark, some swim along, it looked like it was even with you. And when you know in a big valley like, you don't believe what it can be out in the ocean. Trailer and the men of the USS Connor also had run-ins with the Japanese. We picked up a crew from one of the Jap planes. I don't know why they were down, they were in a boat. I don't know whether they were shot down or the plane went bad or what. We had them aboard ship. The only place we had to put them, a destroyer, you don't have no room to spare on it. We had a spud locker. But they were, after they'd been on our ship for a day, they got to know there was just one of us, as long as we had them. We'd had them maybe a, not a week on it. We had transferred them to one of the, car the carriers, and then they took them from there on. But, uh, they are no different than anyone else. They didn't want to leave. <laughs> you get to know them. People are people. I don't care what they are, where they're from. While parts of Trailer's memory have faded, he still remembers one particularly horrific scene from the war. There were two big islands, and they just threw a fire in over the island. I can't remember the name of the big babe. But that's one place I'd never want to go through again. We would go in there and You'd see bodies floating all over the place. 
When Trailer arrived home, he worked for the Townsend Company in Falston, before working with his brother in the construction of houses. Trailer enjoys gardening, feeding birds, and is still very much on the move. As for the key to reaching old age, he has some simple advice. I don't get fit of being mad and hating the world or anything like that. I learned to accept things as they are and enjoy them. And I, I, I go crazy if I can't work.